we're used to it by now, so. And we are back in the champ select. Alright, we do have Hackrum and Soda for Dreamboat. And Macman Nation is their first band is Elise. Always a good choice to ban Elise. Yeah, she's she's got a lot of utility. Um she's been playing a lot as a jungler lately. And her ganks are very terrifying, so Diana yeah. picked off for Macman. She's Damn, just one of those champions that, you know I I've been seeing Elise support too. You know, she doesn't need items to do good. She can just, you know, jump on someone, blow them up, stun them, whatever, throw little homing spiders. Super annoying. Yeah, I mean, she can be played three different lanes, and she can be played mid. So I, I would assume that she could. She a lot. She's active in every lane, so you never yeah. know exactly where she's going anymore. So it's just easier just to ban her out and not deal with it. Uh, Lee exactly. Sin coming out for Dreamboat. Banning that Lee Sin. And the final ban is a Kali, so... Dreamboat does decide they're hovering over Jarvan currently. So we'll see where this is going. Now, I kind of get the feeling that these bans are somewhat targeted. Um, they, they look a little out of the norm. Um, aside from maybe Diana and Elise. Diana's been a bit of a terror lately. Yeah, so, even with those nerfs. Yeah. Uh, we do have Jonna picked up, hovering over Sidwani. Indeed. And I think Sidwani's been in every game so far that we've uh, that we've streamed. Yeah, I mean she's that little bit of rework, the little bit of quality of life buffs that she got definitely yeah. helped. And she went from a champion that didn't get played a whole lot to a champion that's picked in almost every game. Yeah, that's the surprising thing. Um, like, I, I didn't understand that, like, that she had such a big player base that was just waiting for a rework to her. I always thought that she was kind of boring and underpowered, but apparently a lot of people like her. And we do have TF and TF locked in, Leona hovering. And about this Sejuani thing, I had, a, I had a buddy that we play with regularly. There's about 30 or 40 of us that get together and play. Um, and he refers to Sejuani as the pig. <laughs> and that is probably his best champion by far. So the quality buffs to Sidwani did nothing but make him better as a player. So that's actually pretty exciting for our group. Well, that's pretty awesome then. I'm currently waiting. I, I'm waiting for the uh, the Victor rework because Victor is basically my favorite champion of the game. Can't uh, wait to see what they do with him. I think the only thing I really need to do is either give Victor a seventh item slot because his <laughs> augment it's it's great early game. But as far as late game it's just well, I can only build four items in boots, so yeah, they could make it work like Kha'Zix, where you can just like upgrade one ability at level six or something, I don't know. Or yeah. and we do have, have it like we just in. independently. We have Ezreal and a Zed hover. I uh, haven't seen a whole lot of Zed since uh, that little bit of nerf to his E. Putting that one second onto his E hurts a yeah. lot. It's pretty devastating. Zed uh, has the potential to carry, but it's he's exceedingly difficult to play. And we do have the Draven lock in and a hover over Shen. If they lock in Shen, they have a lot of split push potential. And they have a lot of global presence as well. And nothing That's is more right. terrifying than seeing a Shen ult on top of TF as TF runs bot lane. That is terrifying. Yeah, um, I kind of think it might have been a mistake for uh, MacBat Nation not to respond with a Shen of their own to that TF. Uh, I mean, uh, even even Nocturne works pretty well against TF. They did, they did already have Sejuani picked, so... And if you're in a pinch, even Pantheon too. I mean, Pantheon, yeah, Pantheon responds really well to... I mean, granted, he's generally played top lane and can't get to bot lane fast enough, but he can drop down to mid and push that out. I mean, there's always a couple of options there. That's right. 
And the so Shen does is, get locked. This is looking like a very strong team from Dreamboat. They have a lot of engage, disengage, crowd control. A lot of ways to start fights and maneuver around fights. I really like the the way that their team has taken shape. And Macman too, they have a surprising amount of uh, just mobility between Zed and Ezreal. Both of them can just dash in and out of fights. And uh, Janna, obviously, one of the best disengagers in the game. And really, it's really going to depend on this Janna in the bot lane to see... I mean, she can totally mess up a Twisted Fate with a wild time Tornado. It does tell you where he's coming in at. So we'll, yeah, see, exactly. we'll see how that works out. Um, they do have... it's Right now, it's looking... <clears throat> there's a Karthus lock-in, so it's looking like Zed might be playing top lane. Yeah, I believe so. Um, they were hovering over Kassadin for the longest time. I still see the Kassadin. Um, but that Karthus is, seems like an odd choice. I really kind of like the mobility that Kassadin would have brought to this team in addition with you know, Zed and Ezreal. They would have just had a really difficult to initiate on team. And then when you do get the drop on them, oh, there's Janet to reset the fight. I think that would have been uh, an excellent counter. But Karthus, also extremely strong, has uh, probably one of the best late games of any of any AP carry. Yeah, and the Karthus does get locked. And I mean, I see, I see where they're trying to go with this. If Sedge lands that perfect ult, you have Karthus Defile and a Zed eating your entire team. So yeah. they do have a lot of AoE damage if Sedge can land that perfect ult. But it seems like if Sedge misses an ult, that team fight, in my opinion, is lost. So yeah, I really think see how this goes. I really think Macman, um, they're more of a skirmish team, and they can really put out a lot of damage in very small packets. Maybe not in prolonged team fights, but they can really kind of put the herd on in small engagements. Yeah, so we're going we're to try to see if... Um, I'm assuming Macman Nation is going to try to kill them before TF and Shen can respond. Yeah. Uh, you do have a channel time on TF and Shen, so if they can blow somebody up before they get in there, the team fight could kind of tilt in their favor, but until then, it's kind of anybody's game. Yeah. One thing that I kind of want to call attention to is the way the bot lane matchup is probably going to play out. We have, on the side of Dreamboat, very all-in lane from Leona and Draven. And I think that Macman responded very well to this with the Ezreal and the Janna pick. Janna obviously very good against uh, Leona, kind of being... Uh, I don't want to say a hard counter, but definitely a soft counter to her preventing her ability to kind of just dash in and stun people with that Howling Gale. And as well as the shields being able to block a lot of the passive damage from uh, Draven's dots from his um, from his Qs. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Um, if John is, if John can stop Leona from getting to either one of them, that'd be great. But they do have... I mean, Ezreal's going to be eating, um, eating away from Leona. You have John to knock up, so... If Leona can get a hold of somebody, I think they'll blow up, but if not, that lane matchup's going to be very, very difficult for Draven Leona. So yeah. I do have to agree with you on that 100%. And in mid, uh, it's just going to be TF versus Karthus. Pretty classic as far as things go. And I think, I, I'm not sure who's going to be jungling between Shen and, Draven, uh, Shen and Jarvan, but um, both of those champions can give Zed a run for his money in top lane. I mean, Shen does have his shield to block a lot of the damage, and Jarvan has passive armor, so um, we're, I'm expecting Zed to just kind of farm for a while, um, try to push lane when TF roams. Um, when you see that all go off, you're going to see Zed push that lane really hard. He, and since we are in the 36 seconds left for delay, I'm going to go ahead and spoil you here. Shen is top, um, Jarvan's jungling, both Shen and Zed do have teleport, so. Yeah, I was I, I was hoping that uh, Jarvan would be jungling. I really love uh, Jarvan in the jungle. Yeah, his EQ combo lets him kind of gank in places that you normally don't expect him. So if you're not careful, 
and you don't ward accordingly, you can get caught off guard, and that can be a game changer. Oh yes. But overall, I'm really excited to see this the way that this uh, game ends up turning out. I think both teams are very well constructed. A lot of thought went into these picks. Yeah, I mean, they, they both have a really, really strong team fight. Um, it's looking a little... The team fight does look a little weaker for Macman Nation. They're, they're relying a lot on one ultimate. They're relying very heavily on the Sejuani ult. Yeah. So we are getting into the loading screen here, and just kind of looking over it, of the players that are in the game, um, Jarvan, Leona, Twisted Fate, and Shen don't have borders. Uh, excuse me, Shen does have a silver border. Whereas Macman Nation do, does have two plat players from last season and the rest gold. Mm. So let's see, and that, that's going from last season. This season they might be a, a lot stronger. Uh, I haven't seen either of these teams outside of today. Dreamboats are uh, are veterans. They're returning from several tournaments. I definitely recognize uh, some of their names. And uh, they've they've made it pretty far, if memory serves. Mechmen are new, to my knowledge. I've, I've definitely, if they've played in the tournament before, I've never streamed them with 3.5.0 or anything. So, I mean, we're going to see... And maybe we uh, we might have a David versus Goliath kind of matchup here. Um, you do have Twisted Fate and Shen, and those champions are strong, but in the in the hands of somebody that doesn't play them very often, they can be a hindrance. Yeah. So hopefully both team, hopefully both players know how to play their champions. Um, and at this at this level of gameplay, it's not counter picks so much as it is. Learning your champion and being really good with that champion. So, that's right. One of the things that I'm fond of saying about TF is that you know he's good on his own, but he's only overpowered when you have a team that can take advantage of him. Like those TF ganks don't do much if you don't have a team that can capitalize on him being there with a stun. If your and... teammates aren't fast and don't react, then, you know, you might as well not even be there, and you might even get yourself killed. I mean, his his burst damage is actually pretty low, even at level 6, so he's really kind of team-dependent, and it takes a long time for him to kind of come into his own with items. But, um, you know, your team really has to be able to capitalize on that uh, on that global ultimate. And we do, we do seem to get into the game... Real quick, I know you're piggybacking, so you are free to spectate. Yeah, I'm at uh, about 11 seconds right now. 13, yes, 14, 15, yeah. I think we're synced up. We are. Um, center buys from all teams. Uh, Driven Doran's Blade, Ezra Doran's Blade. Um, words coming out from two members of each team. And something I've seen, especially last, last Sunday, during the Final Four, uh... There was a lot of members of each team buying wards. Um, three or four members of the team started with wards every game. So that's get... that's always a good decision. Um, having those early game wards at this crucial moment allows you to prevent the other team from ganking you and uh, therefore snowballing. So it's always good to have that early vision. And I do have a red. My team does have that warded right there, so they know they're there. And they are prepared for it. They're setting pings out. They want to. They don't want to move from that bush. No, they don't. Uh, I, I just, think they. Wards they're just going getting, out. They're just gonna leave. Yeah, I think they just wanted that vision on the enemy wraiths. So obviously they know, and I think that this is going to cause uh, Macmen to run on over to blue and start blue instead of red. I'm. I don't think they were. They might have ever been trying to do red buff. It looks like they were just trying to get over there. Um, Jarvan can kind of start either or, whereas Sedge, uh, starting red buff, kind of hinders her jungling, whereas Jarvan's kind of whatever about it. He does get that bonus attack speed, so the red buff helps him jungle faster. Yeah. They could have been trying for a level 2 gank. I don't know. With that red buff, but... Yeah, it's hard to tell from either team uh, what they were trying to do. My thoughts are they just wanted to protect Red. If they came over with three members of the team, 
Uh, they would have got caught out and killed. And that would have been a very bad start for <laughs> Dreamboat. So, a disaster was avoided today. Indeed. But it looks like both junglers will be off to a very safe start. Um, given smiteless by both of their teams. Yeah, See, he's taken a little damage from Karthus really. He's, those Karthus cues do hurt. Yeah. They don't hit minions, so... And I think there might be some action top. We're going for a steal on that red, possibly, or a gank on I recuse. <laughs> and Jarvan's still kind of hanging out there, so... That's scumbag Jarvan. Oh, and he's oh, going and he misses. In. He misses the smite. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he was trying to EQ into a smite on red and then leave. Maybe just disrupt her a bit. Could be going for a gank right onto this Zed. He's very overextended. Might fall. He will get oh, Zed up. wasn't watching. And, oh, big action up top. Someone's going to die here, and it's going to be Dash and Spirit. Dejuani picking up that first blood and a refresh on her blue buff. Yeah, I'm not I'm not quite sure if um, that was communicating very well. Um, Zed didn't yes, see Jarvan. Oh my god, and Barbecue Champ might go down. Um, always dangerous to tower dive a Shen, but Gucci's going in to do it anyway. Uh, Banana Mang will fall, though. But <laughs> Shen will execute. be denied the kill. <laughs> it is an execute, so uh, that was really well played by Sejuani. Uh, we do have on our intro video, if I don't know if it's still there, um, our cameraman actually made it. It was a Sejuani, goes through her first rotation, and they had 2v1 top lane, and Sej went to tower dive. <laughs> um, so we've seen a lot of Sejuani's tower dive in this tournament the last couple weeks. Yeah, with and that dash, really she can escape. Good. She can escape the tower um, pretty well, even at early levels. Yeah, so we've been seeing the tower dives a lot by Sejuani's early game. So level yeah. three, level four. But Shen will burn that teleport early. Um, I guess he can afford to do that um, at this stage in the game, just to get back into the lane and cut his losses. Yeah, even if he couldn't afford it, he kind of had to. Um, that was a big creep wave there. Yeah, and Zed had gotten a kill and an assist off the Jarvan gank, so he had to get there and get that extra levels and extra experience over Zed to stay uh, in the game. That's right. There aren't a lot of times when, you know, you'll die and I'm just, you know, all chat shout, worth it, but that was definitely one of them. Oh, um... Yeah, Barbecue Champ going in, getting a lot of harass onto a Banana Man there. But here comes Sejuani Bottom. The Howling Gale will catch out You Are Not My Rival. Getting a little bit of damage on him, but uh, Sejuani will back off. Clear some wards instead. TF is a little overextended, but he's getting some harass on the Mac Man. Could be uh, in Mac trouble. Mac Man's kinda... He's, he's out of mana. He doesn't have mana for... He landed the wall, but that's it. And he is... Oh. <laughs> This is going to be a kill on Uncoded, and he will not be vindicated with a kill of his own. I see what TF was trying to do there. He, what he wanted to, he saw Sedge, um, and he was so far up the lane that Flash wouldn't have saved him. Jarvan was nowhere nearby to help. He this wanted is... to get the kill on TF, or uh, excuse me, Karthus, and at least yeah. make something worth of that death. But Karthus He's definitely trying. Time flashed. But I'm, uh, there was a bit of an exchange bottom. Uh, Baby Knight dropped her Ignite onto uh, Wolf Striker and it was just shielded immediately. There's a lot of desperation from Team Dreamboat here, and I, I'm not sure why. They're just making <laughs> overextended plays and kind of getting themselves killed. They need to play much more carefully. I mean, they have a they have a great global comp. Um, the global comps are kind of slow until you hit six or seven. So I mean, they just need to stay calm, farm lanes. Yeah. And Darkspawn goes in onto Ezreal. But he's going to be forced on immediately by uh, Irekus coming in. Ezreal will pick up the kill on the Baby Knight. And you are not my rival. Getting chunked down by Irekus. Uh, Dash and Spirit cannot protect him forever as you are not my rival goes down to Irekus. And now it's Dash and Spirit in trouble. The Karth Assault comes down as Jarvan gets a kill onto Wolf Striker. But he is not long for this world himself. But here comes TF with the ultimate. And he might save his teammate. Getting a stun in on the Darkspawn. Darkspawn in trouble. He's ignited. Gets wildcarded. And here comes Shen, saving everybody. Good guy Shen with the final kill onto Irekus. And TF will pick up that double kill. But here's the teleport from Zed. Now Zed's on the scene. This is absolutely nuts. Oh my god. Macron will pick up 
um, Dash and Spirit, and now Barbecue Your Tramp is looking like he's gonna die here. I don't think he can get away from this Karthus and this Zed. The wall pane goes down, the Skittles, here's Leona, it never ends! Uh, Mag taking lots of damage from the tower, but the swap will get him killed from the tower! Oh my god, I gotta take a breath. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to feel about what just happened. Um, every member of both teams showed up bot lane. <laughs> it was for a revolving a door. It, for a party, they just one after the other, they just kept showing up to team fight. And right when the disaster was about to strike, oh the my God. team would show up. And you kills know, was going out both ways. We and talk about comp. like we talk about like five v fives. That was more like a an eight v eight. Yeah, I mean, Leona died in the beginning of that team fight and showed up at the end to pick up Zed. <laughs> Death timers are very low early game, and if you can't burst teams down early game, you just need to leave. The dead members of the team will be back in time to team fight again. <laughs> exactly. But we saw that global comp, and we thought all was lost for Dreamboat there. Um, yeah. The Sedge was sitting in that bush, and that turned really bad, and then TF, Shen, and Jarman show up to party. And that goes to show you how strong that global comp is. They were down. What was it? Seven, seven hundred gold, maybe a thousand. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're they're still trailing by about seven hundred. Yeah, but uh, it definitely evened things up a little bit for them. There, they got some kills, which is good. They're still a little bit behind, but it's not insurmountable, not by any means. Yeah, and what to respond to that? Macman, Macman need to get that dragon out of the way. Um, TF ult is still down. Shen ult is still down. If they made a play and went for dragon. Oh, uncoded will eat a Sejuani ult as Irekyu comes in doing big damage. Macman Zack throwing Skittles everywhere. The Defile will pick up uncoded. And now Dash and Spirit's in trouble. He will, in turn, ultimate, putting everyone in the rage cage. That tower is not going to cooperate, though, and Irekyu and Macman will get right out of there. Yeah, I mean, we, the we talked about that, that advantage that was. Unnoticeable, it just became noticeable yeah. for Macman Nation. And I'm really surprised they didn't try for a dragon there. Sedge and Karthus were both about half life with bot lane pushed out. Okay, um, dragon was free there. Especially with that big creep wave there, I think they kind of missed a window of opportunity, but eh, they got a kill. Yeah, they, they got, got two kills. Got yeah, they got they got driving too, so that dragon was all but free. Yeah. And TF Here comes Valen. TF. Darkspawn is going to eat a gold card, and he's going to continue to be CC'd by Leona, but the damage is just not there. Um, Leona's ultimate will go down hitting nobody. Darkspawn shields, and is shielded by Janna. Uncoded taking a lot of damage. And the Karthus ult is going to come down. Triple kill, possibly, for Karthus. Um, Macman Zack only manages to pick up TF, though, as Ezreal kills Leona. The Shen ult saved Draven, though, and this might allow Gucci Banana Man to uh, push that top tower. I do have the teleport off from Shen. And actually, Shen had ulted TF there, um, and it, it's, it saved TF from Ezreal ult. The Ezreal ult hit him right when he ulted, Yeah. so you didn't get a chance to see the shield. But the Karthus ult came down and finished it off, so the <laughs> Karthus seems to be a really good pick for this global comp. Um, to fight the global comp, excuse me. Karthus is able to just alt bot lane anytime TF shows up. And, and everyone's and taking damage. And he's throwing a wrench in their plans, so... Exactly. I think that's, that is... uh... Oh, sorry. Uh, there's a lot of action up top, just Gucci going to town on barbecue. If we take a look at their items, we see uh, lots of big aggressive items. Oh! Dash and Spirit and Barbecue look to be in trouble. That ultimate comes out from my Iraqi. Dash and Spirit will get ulted by Zed, and Zed will pick up the kill. Tower diving going balls deep, and Zed will get the double kill onto Shen. You well. know, Sejuani rushed that Golem Lizard item. Um, Golem Lizard. Ancient Golem item. <laughs> and uh, it lets him and, tower dive effectively early game. And to add to that chaos, also, uh, Karthus picked up um, TF. 
We got the ult on Darkspawn. You're not my rebel. Might be too low to finish this fight, though. He will pick up Wolf Striker, and Darkspawn will be forced to leave. And that's one of the scary things about Leona. She does turn team fights very well. Um, Draven was looking a little low there. And yeah. Leona shows up and locks down both members of Magman Nation in the bot lane. So yeah, very was... good Leona is terrifying. She is. A lot of people underestimate the range on her ultimate, and it's it's pretty huge. Can catch you out from like halfway across the lane, and then suddenly you're stunned, and then the entire enemy team is killing you. And while we have a break from the mayhem of this game, uh, make sure you guys check out the RP giveaway um, in the chat. It's involving Instagram, so I'm sure Red Ninja, Red Hand Ninja, will post yep. about it here in a little bit. And meanwhile, um, <laughs> Irekyu uh, has been chasing Uncoded all the way through mid lane and managed to pick him up with the help of Karthus. Those Karthus ultimates, I, I gotta say, they've someone's been dying every time he uses it. Has been destroyed. Yeah, um, they just they just been kind of Karthus has been letting his team do the work, doing the heavy lifting, if you will, and Karthus is just saying, "Hey, I'm gonna press R and just pick up a few kills." <laughs> Press R, receive kills. Uh, he's he's pretty much just... I mean, granted, he has been fighting TF in the mid lane pretty well. Um, TF is six kills, or six deaths, excuse me, and two kills, whereas Karthus is six and O. Oh. Yeah. Uh, if you don't get a lead on TF early, it's very hard to come back as TF. Um, his ultimates are a lot less scary now. Yeah. And, and he only has that. Lane, he's going to get yeah. laughed at. He only has that uh, Kage's pick. And he he rushed up Boots three, and not not just Boots three, Boots and mobility with Home Guard, I guess, to get back to lane faster. But kind of a waste, in my opinion. I mean, his tower his tower is already gone. Um, I don't I don't see the need in mobility boots when you're we have some action bot lane here. Yeah, TF's gonna ultimate in the good ultimate from Dion Leona there. Uh, but she's gonna get pushed to the tower. Darkspawn will go down to Leona. Um, we got the channel coming in, the Defile going down, uh, the Wall of Pain slowing everyone down, and it's just gonna be a massive route um, for Team Dreamboat here. They're just gonna lose four players in that exchange, and they're gonna lose their bottom tower. Um, Shen tried to stand United. I can't see who he used it on, but uh, they were just killed before uh, he was able to teleport in. So this is definitely not looking good for mm -hmm. Team Dream Boats. And Sedge was healthy enough to go down and start Dragon. And the rest of the team does show up to tank it for him. So there's a Dragon Tower and four kills for Macman Nation. And that gold lead does go up to 7,000 gold. Yeah, that's... At 15 minute mark. At 15, at 15 minutes, you know. I remember when we were talking about the gold lead and it used to be 700. Now it's expanded to... Or, uh, excuse, yeah, 700. Now it's like 10 times that amount, so... Pretty scary for Team MacMen. This is a strong first showing for them. Yeah, I mean, they came in... Um, they came into this match very strong. Um, Dreamboat... I don't want to say they threw the game early by being super aggressive, but I think they threw the game early being super aggressive, so... <laughs> I mean, I just, gotta, I just gotta go out and say it. Um, they did have a very, very strong global comp, but the thing about global comps is if you fall behind early game, which they have, it's harder to come back from, in my opinion, than a poke comp. Yeah, this is... At least a, uh, like a poke comp can kind of bunker and defend and whittle you down. But, you know, you need that big advantage, you were saying, to just make your global presence actually worth something. Oh, and the flash from TM, or the, the flash, flash from Shen. Oof. That's, uh, flash taunt misses as Zed ulted J4 <laughs> and just left. <laughs> the, he decided he didn't want to play that game. Um, TF was MIA, I don't know if he had seen him. But he just decided to leave. Yeah. He wanted no part of that. Pretty much. <laughs> just I mean, like, if you can eh, a flash, here. if you burn an enemy flash and leave, that's close to five minutes of a flash being down. There's no yeah. need to engage on that. No, oh, but Shen will be engaging, catches Macman Zack in the taunt. Macman Zack will flash out, but he's going to go down. 
But it's Karthus. He never really dies, even when he dies. Um, I don't think he's going to challenge the Rage Ultimate, but um, it was a good pickup for uh, Team Dreamboat there. At least they got Karthus. Yeah, and granted, that there was this one for zero exchange. Um, but do you see the damage that Karthus was able to put onto Shen and Jarvan, the tankiest members of that team? Oh, yeah. If there's a team it, fight out, that's pretty think significant. I don't think there's any way Dreamboat can win a team fight. Yeah, and especially since Karthus went for both Tier and Catalyst. I mean, he's building a trust fund so he can afford it. Janna comes in with her ultimate, monsoons everyone away. A lot of damage going down on everyone. There's the Requiem we were looking for, bringing everyone on Dreamboat very low. Gucci Banana Mang dropping low himself, but he will kill uh, Draven and escape. I reckon he was going in on Baby Knight. And Dra uh, Zed will come back at the double kill. Shen and Jarvan both is trying to escape and be out, but uh, BBQ Champ will be spotted. Tries to kill Wolf Striker, but goes down to Irekus. And it's Jarvan versus the world. I mean, you see Zed with a Hex Trigger. The Hex Trigger actually saved him and let him get that double kill. So yeah. he's building appropriately. Um, he knows TF is weak. He had the Hex Drinker. In normal circumstances, that would have been a really bad idea on Zed, but he knew the circumstances and was able to turn that around. Yeah. And yeah, as he was TF being is, hunted... TF is trying to uh, get his ultimate in. Wolf Striker is going to go down to Dash and Spirit. Kind of a misplay. Darkspawn will walk into a card and die. <laughs> he didn't um, have an option there. He, I know. He's either walking to Jarvan or walking to the card. <laughs> Which one's going to hurt more? Um... I mean, it was a nice recovery by Dreamboat. That's partly in because of hey. the Magnation staying too long, I think. Yeah, and on the plus side, TF is worth gold again. <laughs> yeah, TF's trying to make, make a comeback. 3-8 and eight is not something that you want to have happen to you. I mean, that's, that's one of those things you just... It sucks. Um, I mean, we've all had those games. And TF is staying those, in the game and being strong, yeah. so... And Irekus gets caught in the middle of a blue steel and will die to uncoded. C could this be a comeback? So if this, you know, if Dreamboats can pull this out, this would be a pretty epic comeback. Yeah, and there's a pink ward in both bushes. Yeah, I'm, I and see that. How come no one's attacking them? Do they have they vision of each them. other? No, they do not. Oh. They do not have vision. <laughs> if you hit F1 and 2 for me real quick, they, they don't have vision. So... Huh. We do have a little bit of skirmish down a bot lane here. That's kind of funny, yeah. Um, Gucci Bang Bang dealing lots of damage. Macman Zack will pick up the kill. Uncoded is so low he can't participate in the fight. The Rage Cage comes down and Banana Bang is caught in it. Here's Janna on the scene, shielding her teammates up, monsooning them away, forcing them to stale and defile. And it looks like they're going for Dash and Spirit and trying to finish him off. But he will scoot away, as Jarvan often does. Barbecue Champ will also escape, and I think uh, Dash and Spirit is just fed up with this world and might run into a tower. Yeah, he's just gonna try and deny people the kill. But Janna wants it! Will the Monsoon- oh, no. It's oh, gonna go to- Janna! He, it... he gives it to Janna. Uh, he barely dodged a file there and dodged the Q. Uh, yeah. If you have to- if you're stuck in that situation to either give a kill to the support or the super fed mid, Give it to the support. Um, the defile was, it was literally just barely touching him. Yeah. Just got his little baby toe. <laughs> so, J4 all in all, uh, he wasted a bunch of time. Well, he wasted the enemy's time, which is yeah. what counts. I guess I probably should have clarified that, huh? We do have Jarvan. Jarvan does have that locket. He's gonna, it's going to help a little with the Karthus defile. But at this point, I don't know if Karthus will really care about the locket. He'll just be able to melt through it. No, and I I noticed that um, he had the makings of the Rod of Ages, but he instead just went straight for the Death Cap. He's like, yeah, I'll get the Rod of Ages later. And if you're ever making that kind of a decision, that just kind of indicates how ahead you you are. Oh, Jarvan dashed in after the Jarvan's, Jarvan's taken. Yeah, but he's going to flash out. Here comes Gucci, though, and... There's the Karth Assault. Everyone's going to take lots of damage. Uh, double kill for Karthus onto Draven and, and uh, Jarvan. Baby Knight goes down as well. Also to Karthus. Just walking with that uh, with that Defile. 
an uncoded eating skittles. Oh. I don't think I've ever seen a Karthus just walk up to a Twisted Fate with no mana and half health and... <laughs> wow! And the TF Flash so is damaged. forced. I yeah. also want to have three towers go down, maybe more, for Dreamboat, so... They're getting pushed back to their inhibitor towers now. Yeah, this is just... it's an attack from all sides. Just the tower game that uh, Mac Man is playing is just pretty staggering. They haven't lost one yet, and they're about to take their sixth. This is... and, and just look at the kills! Ten kills for Dreamboats. Twenty-nine! For Macman. And I'm always a big, big believer in League of Legends is not a team deathmatch game. If you want to do that, go play uh, Arams <laughs> on the Howling Abyss. But the thing that Macman are doing is that they're pushing objectives hard when they get those kills. Yeah. And, and you have to. With the global presence of Blue Team, you have to be very, very careful when you do push objectives because they can just come out of nowhere. So they're, they're trying to kill at least three or four members of Dreamboat before they push anything. That's right. But they are taking uh, good advantage of the times when they do get those kills. They always immediately push a push an objective, whether it be Dragon or a turret or, you know, whatever. They, they make the best possible use of their time. And a little side note on itemization. Uh, Zed has a bulwark? <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I'm super confused. Um, I get where he's going. He's 8 and 2. He can afford to build it. Karthus is huge. Um, John, let Jonna rush a. Australia's. Oh. Hey, to interrupt you, but we got another big team fight going down. There's a Jaw of Renault. Leona will catch out uh, Ezreal, but it's not going to be enough. I wreck you is just wrecking people in combination with. Oh, it's just going to be an ace here. I don't think that. Oh, you are not my rival. Just barely managed to escape, but at the cost of his inhibitor turret and presumably his inhibitor. But sorry, as you were saying. Um, I lost all track in that team fight. It was um, the bulwark. <laughs> and Zan gets killed by uh, four members of Macman. <laughs> Zed's been in the bulwark. He's doing a lot of damage without Bloodthirst or Blade of the Room King. <laughs> Macman's gonna try to end the game or at least take down a net. Yeah, that's so gonna be. Him his tower down. This is just such a huge advantage that they have. They're just, they're like not caring about anything that uh, Dreamboats can do right now. They're just walking in and like they own the place because they do. Oh, is up and he does pop. And he opts to run after Ezreal. I don't know if he can do enough damage before Ezreal can E away. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't think he can kill Ezreal. There was, there was a few safer targets to pick. And Zed is teleporting in on that bush. And he teleports into three members of the team by himself. <laughs> um, do that's that instant death when you do that? Yeah, but... And it still might be. Maybe that's, uh... See, Zed's a little fragile. That runic bulwark, if you're gonna get a tanky item, you might as well get that, because it uh, has just a bunch of stats on it. But he might die to that Draven passive. I'm gonna clarify something. Zed should never live that long by himself. Um, <laughs> it just shouldn't be a thing that happens. And Karthus does get picked off. Karthus and goes is... down to Shen. Yeah, that was uh, maybe a bit of miscommunication. Maybe he thought he had teammates there. But, um, oh well, I guess it doesn't matter at this point. He's probably saying. But yeah, <laughs> I've, I've never seen a Zed live that long and just go through that much. I guess I mean, the was... Bulwark saved his life there. Otherwise he would have died. He has a hex drinker and a bulwark, and he was able to just run into four people, teleport there, leave, go back, and then leave again. Um, so it's eight towers to one right now. Um, and we do see Zed picking off the cutlass, so that will be a Blade of the Room King eventually. Yeah. And I think that we're going to be seeing uh, the Baron come out for Team Macman. I don't believe that there's going to be anything. The Dreamboats can do to stop it. No, it's all but theirs. And the dragon does spawn in about 40-ish seconds. So, I'd imagine them to just clear out the jungle, uh, get a dragon, go back and buy, and then try to make this final push into Dreamboats' base here. Yeah, exactly. They do well to push out some of the other lanes, just to keep pressure on those and kind of seesaw the enemy team between them. 
But they could also just go straight for the, uh, the Nexus turret, which is exposed right now. And we do see Zed and Sejuani kind of just pushing by themselves. Dreamboat has no vision on the map. They, they have one ward. They have one ward. That's pretty they brutal. Just, they just placed a second one down over their base. Um, looking real dark out there for Dreamboat. So they have no idea where the other members of Mac Nation is. Yeah. Um, Leona seems to have picked up a Mikhail's Crucible. I guess she's using that on whoever might get initiated on by, uh, Sejuani. I would imagine that the Crucible would probably... I think it might be saving it for Draven. Um, all members of... Oh, they're just getting zoned out so hard. That Wall of Pain just, ugh. No one. They just all retreated from it. Well, Wall of Pain does reduce armor and magic. Uh, does it do both, or is it just magic resistance? It's both. Yeah, that is that is very brutal for them to have to walk through to try to defend an inhib. Being so far behind, it's just a death trap at this yeah. point. And, and we do have the tank Zed tanking, uh, <laughs> tanking the inhibitor tower there. And Macman is just playing the War of Attrition here. They're, they know that they have all the advantage. They can just take their time, kill those inhibitors, and wait for this to happen. The big initiation. Macman with Zach will go down to Draven, but he is dead and loving it as Karthus. The Requiem goes down. Triple kill for Macman Zach. And it's TF versus the entire enemy team sans Karthus as the Nexus will drop shortly. I mean, that was, that was just really good aggression by Macmillan Nation. They, when they killed the enemy team, they actually pushed out objectives and were able to just win the game. Uh, it was fairly one-sided, actually. The Extremely one-sided, yeah. 54,000 to 37,000. Man, I'm dyslexic today. <laughs> So all in all, um, I have to give props to Zed picking up a bulwark. I don't think I've ever seen that. And he does come out in second place for the most gold on his team. Uh, he is the most farmed. I guess so. he was doing that in, like, maybe just to buff his team a little bit, but it's also just an extremely efficient item. For, like, if you need some tanky stats, that's probably your best bet. Gives you health, magic resist, armor. Helps your teammates. It's all good. And what surprised me is that he was he is ten, two, and eleven. Um, even with a Borg, you would expect him not to pick up as many kills, but he seemed to be able to do that. Well he and might be on to something. He might he may be. Um, we are doing a ten dollar RP giveaway coming up here towards the end of the day. Uh, Red Headed Ninja will be 